Hello and welcome back to another house renovation video. So again, it's not a motorbike video, so if you don't want to watch it, I fully understand, uh, please just skip on. Um, this is where I am now. So the got a dry line wall over there with a the damp proof in. We have the chimney breast uh, inserts there, which are dry lines and also the other side as well. So and biggest job of all, I've actually uh, plaster to ceiling as well uh, be showing you how to plaster a wall as well so that's a skill which is yeah it's, it's a difficult thing to master and uh, I'll run you through that as well right tools that I need to skin the wall uh, first of all a decent plasterous bucket so that's going to be deep and a nice size we need a mechanical whisker uh, mixer as well which I've got out there um, I have already scrimmed up the joints on the plasterboard the reasons we have to do that is because you don't want the plaster cracking down on the joints and this avoids that happening so make sure you do use uh, scrim tape you'd be very surprised how many jobs I've seen before where plasters or professional plasterers have gone into a job and they haven't actually scrimmed the joints and it's just cracked a whole lot and I've got to go over the top of it with scrim tape and plaster it again so they're sadly paying twice but yeah I've, I've seen a few jobs like that it's never made sense to me a little tip as well when you get your scrim tape if you just pull it off as per normal what you'll find is you'll get a scraggy end around the outside but if you strike it with a knife around each of the sides there on both sides then you won't get that scraggy end all right and it makes it a lot lot easier when you've got to use up 100 meters of this stuff so uh, always worth knowing that i've got a bucket trowel as well just to scrape the the bucket out in this case i am using a spot board it's always good to have a a um, bucket handy of water just to clean up and uh, keep everything clean which is half the battle with with plastering so uh, makes a neater job if you keep everything clean wet your plaster uh, wet your spot board which i'm using in this case because it stops the plaster sucking into the board itself and you know makes it much easier to pull off the board as well i've got a float this one's only about i don't know must be about eight years old so they do uh, over the years they do wear in and it does become much easier to use and you get a better finish once you have a float which is worn in this is a, a Marshalltown one I think they're about 50 or 60 pounds and uh, yeah it's tools of the trade isn't it yeah so that's a bucket of water a brush what else do I need uh, a bucket trowel just to pull the stuff out of the bucket the excess and uh, of course I need a hawk as well that one of those there so right let's mix up some plaster and I'll get cracking now in this case because it's plasterboard I don't need to PVA it or SBR bond it because you can just go straight on top of plasterboard it's a wonderful thing to plaster on top of and it's always nice because you don't get any of that slide that you get with PVA the most important thing with plastering is that you're you've got to control the uh, the, the suction on the walls all right if you don't control the suction you're going to really really struggle okay so yeah get that right if you're doing uh, our tech ceilings or a, a normal wall that you're going on top of with plasterboard it's a piece of, well it's much easier uh where you don't have to do that right let's uh, get some plaster on the walls okay plaster mixed up i don't really need to have a spot board for this really but does make it easier certainly when I was doing the ceiling it's quite a big it's a bigish ceiling so but to uh, make it as easy as possible for my bones not going to be retiring anytime soon so plastering is an art at the end of the day and it's one which I've got a, a few strings to my bow but plastering was the one which was probably one oh, mix it up a bit runny actually <laughs> it's a yeah it's a skill which is really quite difficult to learn is you can't teach it it's just something that you've got to learn the hard way normally actually 
Yeah, we do want uh, plaster and jobs that have gone a bit wrong. So, best way I, I would teach it really, this is too sloppy, but best way I teach it is get a bit on your float, like so. Start about four inches down, go down, back up, grab a bit, and then push it into the top. Mm -hmm. That gives you a, a neater finish. And so it's down, back up, grab a bit, and push in. Like so. The longer the strokes that you use, the better. Going in this top corner here, into the corner, over to the right. Grab a bit on the heel of the trowel, on the back edge, and then just go up the top there and pull it down. So basically when the plaster dries, it kind of shrinks on itself. And, uh, and as it shrinks, it, it kind of pulls into the nooks and crannies. So this is the first coat of two, basically. There you go, that's the first one on. So uh, you can see how that goes on there. So what we've got to do, we've got to walk away now. And what we're waiting for is for this to be touched dry. So what I mean by that is that when you touch the plaster, you don't want it sticking to your hand, all right? You want it quite dry, and that means it's pretty much ready for a second coat or a final coat then. Uh, but at the moment, it's drying. We're going to let it do its thing. Have a tidy up, clean up your tools and your bucket and everything else. And then in a second, we'll, uh, well, in about half an hour, um, we'll come back, see if it's ready for a second coat. And um, then we'll go over with a second coat. With the second coat, you want a thinner uh, layer rather than the first one is there to kind of take out the nooks and crannies and the bends in the wall as such and all the bits and bobs. On the second one, we want a nice thin coat because then it makes it easier to trowel up and get a nice flat finish. Right, so I have a little bit of plaster left over from that wall over there. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use it up on this wall here. Now what I want to explain here is with corner beads, where a lot of people go wrong, is that they'll start here and they'll pull it across over to the corner bead. But what you need to do is fill up that corner bead. And the best way to do that is load up your, your trowel with your hawk, and then you want to strike up and then back down on the corner bead. Because if you go this way and start from the you know, middle and go over, for example, then it takes a lot more filling up and it's not so accurate. And also you can end up with a little bump, sort of a two inch bump going back um, when you do it like that. So strike up and then strike down on corner beads to get the best effect and it's, it makes it a lot, lot easier. This is about half an hour later, okay? So we're gonna walk over now and as you can see, it's still very rough. It's not meant to be neat, this coat. It's just about getting the first coat on and letting it shrink in to the nooks and crannies and the, uh, and the joints in the plasterboard like this one here. So as I said to you earlier, if I touch it now, look, it's not sticking to my finger. That means that it's generally good for the second coat. So by the time I set up and get uh, go outside and knock up some more plaster, then uh, this will be ready to go. So that's what I'll do now. Okay, second coat about to go on now. Knocked up some plaster. Much better mix this time. Okay, so same principles as before with laying on. I want to kind of do a bit of this. So a couple inches down, push down, grab a bit, and then go into the top. That's all I need to say on this, really. Again, we're just laying it on at the moment. We're not smoothing it out. We're just getting it on the, on the wall. As much as you can, the best way to lay on plaster is, is, is longer strikes as possible because you've got more chance of ironing out any of the uh, any of the dips then that are in the wall so 
longer strikes as possible within reason and then do that to the whole wall. Again, we're just laying it on the wall. We're not farting around with it yet. We'll do that later. It just needs to go on. Let's say it's a, a thin coat as well. It's only about three mil thick maximum, really. Okay, so at the bottom, what I do is uh, I start from the bottom, drag it up, back down, and then back up again to fall into the rest of it there. Again, get rid of the excess plaster left over and your flexi bucket, for example. Get rid of all that and wash up. Okay, so 10, 15 minutes later, 10, 15 minutes later, I'm just gonna go over it now. Kind of probably a little bit early more than anything, but why not, eh? So again, what, the way I do it is in this semi-circle, first trowel over, like so. You kind of know that you're going in the right direction then. I generally pull it down from the top as well. It's funny how like, I've been doing this so many times now, and actually when I'm walking through it with you guys, you don't realise how much you've learned over the years. But yeah, I, uh, that's the way I normally do it. Grab a bit, pull it up the top, and then drag it down. That's what you always Right, let that go for another 15, 20 minutes, I reckon. And then we'll trial it over again. Now, um, we'll cut around the sockets here as well. Whilst that's going off, it's a good time to get rid of all the plaster that's fallen in there. Like so, just cut it out with your float. I'll give it another 10 minutes and then we'll go over it again. But you've got to let it go. It's, you know, a common saying in the plastering world is that you've got to walk away. And that is honestly the best thing to do. So as this is going off, go and have your dinner, go and make a cup of tea, go and do something which takes you out the ring because it's, it's all so tempting to stand there waiting for it to dry and and waiting for, you know, to do a bit more. So just walk away, walk out the room, do something else. It's sometimes a good idea up here, just across like that. It's quite often that's an easy place for it to uh, fail sometimes and you kind of get a bit missing some hollows there. So yeah, it's good practice to do that, I find. I'm just starting to go over it now. I can feel it sort of flattening out lovely now. Same principle all the way around. Semi-circles work best for me. <laughs> if I wasn't filming, then I probably would have done the other two walls, but with filming and all the fighting around with the cameras, I didn't want to take on too much, so. What you want to try and do really, officially, is you want to try and do every angle. So you want to go down on it, you want to go up on it, you want to go left and right and then diagonal. If you do that, then you're going to fill up pretty much everything, aren't you? This is the closer now, guys. The last one, which is good, because I'm running out of light and I want to go home for me tea. So this is the final one. I guess another half an hour maybe has gone by. 20 minutes, something like that. Um, want a wet brush for this one. And what we're going to do is just to go over it one last time. Tidy up around the edges as well at the top. Just go along with your float if you have got any muck on there. Sometimes it might be best just to brush in there. It just really neatens it up. Gives it a perfect seam there. You'll just kind of learn where you need to apply water to. Um, just splash it on like so. And just spread it around. And you can really see that this is the final coat now, or the final, final trowel. It feels flat already, but it's kind of filling in the bits which you just kind of can't see really. Brushing at the top just slightly, just to close it over. Gives it a nice, neat finish. Like so. 
It's always a nice moment, this, when you know that, <laughs> that you've done it and it's, uh, and it's drying in the background nicely. By the way, I should show you the end product, didn't I? So, can you see that? Dead flat, dead smooth, really, really smooth, like glass, that is. And uh, I'm not sure if I've shown you already, but I've actually done the ceiling. I didn't film that, because you can see why. You can <laughs> imagine doing that ceiling there. It, it kind of looks, it's not, it's not bumpy, by the way. I'm kind of showing up some bumps out. It is dead flat, it is dead smooth, so. Um, but again, you know, ceilings are very much hard work. They are really difficult to, uh, very labour intensive. So, um, but yeah, dead flat. That wall, so tomorrow, I, I won't film this, but I've got that wall to do there. Uh, around into the chimney breast there. And uh, I've already done that side. That's a bit that I got left over where I showed you the, I had a plaster in a trim corner bead and that's it yeah so get that done tomorrow but I won't film that I'll just catch up with you after all that is done so I want to quickly show you how to do corners uh, or how I do corners now just to put you in the picture this is where I am so uh, first coat on of that wall there fair old size also put a, a wall on in the corner over here as well, uh, just that back wall there, and uh, and I've also done this. So I want to show you how I do corners. Uh, hopefully you can see that is a corner there. Now this has uh, gone off for a, well, it's the first mix and it's been going off for about 25 minutes or so since I mixed it up. So. Um, corner trowel, this is a Marshalltown one, they, they normally make the best stuff for anything masonry, whether it's uh, bricky work or plastering work. Um, yeah, so I, this is how I do it, some people go in and then brush down at the end, I much prefer this because it fills up the gaps. So I'm going to get some, a bit of plaster on it, like so, not a lot, I'm not going to get my ladder out at the moment and get right up the top. but. Just go like that and just fill up the join there and just go down. It doesn't take a lot of filling up anyway, generally speaking. So, uh, and that just closes up the gap there. So much easier with one of these, I can tell you. There was a time where I didn't have one of these and I was cutting in um, without that. So I'm just going to do this other corner as well in the chimney breast area. All right, so let's take you up a bit closer just to show you how to do that and what the corners look like at the end of it. Now I'm not sure if you can see that on here. As I say, it's the first one so it's pulling in now and uh, it gives you a nice neat corner compared to where I haven't done up there. Look, you know, that's how it was all the way down here. Just one strike down, fill up the gaps and that's going off now with the rest of it. So, so there you go, that's how to do corners. Same on the second coat as well. Once I put on the final uh, finishing coat there. I'll um, let it go off for a little while and then I'll just do those corners as one of the last things to to finish off. So, neat job. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you've got any comments or any questions that you want to ask me, please drop them in the comments box below. Uh, I've got all the products that I use. I've got links in the description. And I have many more videos as well uh, on DIY projects, including moving a radiator, insulating a bay window, and much, much more. So drop me a subscribe, like the video would be really appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.